Greetings, everybody. My name is Rob Banke, co-founder over at Halborn. Welcome to another exciting episode of Critical Spotlight. Uh, today, we have one of Halborn's top, top engineers, Carlos Pala. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do at Halborn? And tell us about what you found. Sure. So here in Harvard, I'm leading the off-chain team. So anything related to applications, infrastructure, or anything that is not the blockchain or the smart contracts, my team is going to be pen testing this. And in this case, for this vulnerability, we were doing a pen test over this client application that was capable of signing some specific transactions. So you were going to be giving the transaction to the application. It will be showing you some details about the transaction and you could just click a button in order to sign it if you want it or just reject it. The fun part of this is that we found that in the transaction that you can pass into the application, you had two different ways of seeing the information. You had the compiled way of the information and also a JSON representing the same data. The fun fact is that when you were going to sign the transaction, you were going to be seeing the details inside the JSON, but not inside the compiled transaction, which is what was getting actually signed. So we were able to show how you can send a malicious transaction, uh, making it look completely legitimate. But then when the user sign it, he will be signing the pre-compiled uh, transaction and he will be basically sending all the funds to the attacker. Is this your first time finding something like this for a customer? No, 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 no. In, well, in Harbor, as you know, we audit a lot of applications related to transactions, especially wallets. And it is very common or kind of common to find different ways to steal funds from a wallet or even to just hack into a centralized or decentralized exchange and yeah. just get other accounts, other people's money. Right. And when we were working on this, I mean, some of the audience is familiar with sort of uh, black box, white box. What, what was this one? So in this case, it was a white box. So okay. we had access to the code, so we were able yep. to identify exactly what was happening. Still incredibly frightening, of course, right? Like, you know, a lot of folks that we talk with are always so focused on smart contracts, this, that, yeah. and the other. This has nothing to do with it. You know, it's like, hey, you know, the, the, um, the actual application was capable of doing this. So um, tell us a little bit about your methodology. Like, how did you go about uncovering this? Yeah, so in Upstream, we are very used to pen test different kinds of applications, as I explained at the beginning, web applications, mobile, wallets. But actually, even if they are very different among them, the methodology is not going to be that different. So I love these white box uh, pen tests because they give me the source code. And what I usually do is to get familiar with the application, playing it, with it, and also checking the code of the functionalities that I'm playing with, with the goal of just, hey, let's get to know the applications. Once I know the application, what you can do, what you cannot do, and I start doing uh, threat modeling in order to identify some risky actions that we could start attacking. And then I start checking the code. I start checking, hey, how are they checking this? How are they uh, testing that I cannot do this? Or can I even bypass the protections that they have? And once I find different vulnerabilities, of course, I'm going to be deploying, uh, I'm going to be creating my own proof of concept. And I will go to the real application to test it in order to, of course, show in the report to the client that, hey, you are vulnerable to this and this is the way you can compromise it. Got it, yeah. I mean, of course, of course. Um, so now that we know a little bit more about your methodology, once we find something like this, obviously report it to the customer and we, we tell them right away, right? But then how, what, do we, um, what do we recommend how to fix it? How do they remediate something like this? <laughs> So, of course, uh, it is great if we, they could develop applications without vulnerabilities. That, that would be amazing. Um, of course. As, <laughs> In general, yes. As this is not happening yet, my suggestion, of course, is to, well, create some kind of pipeline in order to run some automatic tools, in order to find some vulnerabilities. But, of course, always hire some experts to do this kind of pen test in order to try to uncover as many vulnerabilities as possible. Um, I think that in cybersecurity, it's especially important to hire experts in specific fields because everybody can do a, a nice report, but not everybody is going to be able to find vulnerabilities in your specific application. So I think this will be something super important. Yeah, totally. Makes a lot of sense. Well, um, 
I think that's about it for today, Carlos. I can't thank you enough for coming and talking with uh, the audience today. So thank you, Carlos, and thank you, audience, for tuning in to another episode of Critical Spotlight. See you at the next one.